Uploading files to ASP.NET Core seems quite simple on the surface, but once you start working through which framework to use, how to efficiently and safely store the files, and how to display them and more, the topic gets quite complex. In fact, I could probably teach a whole course on it, which gave me an idea. I'm going to teach a mini course here on YouTube on this topic for free as a holiday gift. In this video, I will go over what you can expect in the coming days. Now, before we get started, there are three things you need to know. First, I want you to improve your C-sharp skills. And if you want to improve those skills, you should subscribe to this channel. With closing in on 500 C-sharp videos and counting, this is the place to learn C-sharp. Second, if you like the free C-sharp resources, go to www.imtimcorey.com and click on the resources tab. There you'll find my podcast, the C-Sharp Projects page, and a lot more. Specifically, that C-Sharp Projects page is really helpful for knowing which project to choose, how to get started in it, and what the other options are. Third, if you need a deep education in a C-Sharp topic, I have dozens of courses to help you out. I also have a C-Sharp Master Course to get you started from the ground up if you really need to start from the beginning or reset and refresh your skills in C Sharp. Not only will you be getting a world-class education no matter which one you choose, but you'll also be helping to fund my free content like this series so that everyone can have a great education in C Sharp, not just those who can afford it. So let's talk about what this series, this mini course, is going to entail. Now, this is the Blazor file upload. So you already know that we're going to use Blazor for this, but let's go over what we've got on the docket. Now, first up, this video. This is the intro video. This is the first video in the series. But after that, we're going to cover simple file uploading. So if you just want to know, hey, how do I just upload a file to Blazor server? Well, we're going to cover that. You're going to see it. It'll work pretty much the same way for other technologies, but we're going to use Blazor server as our option. Now, that video will just be about uploading files. And I do say files because it will have multi-select. We'll be able to limit the file size. We'll be able to limit the file type and a lot more stuff. But we're going to focus in on just that. So if that's all you care about, that video will cover it. However, when you start getting into the real world, you find that your job isn't done once you've got the files to upload, because what do you do with them next? Where do they go? What, how do you make sure they're safe? And so many other things. So the next video is going to cover associating files with form content. This is very important because if you allow people to upload files, that's great. Cool. You can upload a file, but how do you know what that file then represents? How is it associated with a user? How is it associated with an activity or more information? For example, if you allow a person to upload their profile picture, it should be in association with their other information, like their first and last name and their account. But if you just say, hey, let's just randomly allow people to upload files, you're kind of missing that piece. So we're going to associate files with form content. So when you upload a file, you also wait until that form is posted before you capture that file and then you associate the record together. And speaking of record, we're going to talk about capturing files in SQL. And this is a this is a topic that is a little bit contested. I had a, a whole video on the dev questions uh, site, or if you want to listen to the dev question podcast, either way, we have a episode covering how to store files in SQL and the most efficient way of doing that. And spoiler alert, it's not going to be to put the file into SQL. Now, there can be some arguments for, well, the file is small enough and yada, yada. We're not going to go there because that's talking about the 5%. We're going to talk about the 95% most of the time. The most efficient, cost-effective way to store your files will be outside of SQL and then store a link in SQL to that file. And so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how to do that. And we'll show you how to do that. We'll actually store files um, in a directory and then link them in SQL and show you how to deal with different environments and changing where those files are located without breaking any of your links. So we'll cover all of that in the capturing files in SQL lesson. But once you've captured a file in SQL, that's not really the end of the story. 
And so we're going to cover displaying files from SQL. So you've put files in a SQL. That's great. But how do you actually get them back out? How do you use them in your website? If we're uploading a profile picture, then you should be able to show that profile picture on your profile. How do we do that? How do we get the information back out of SQL and especially the relative file, a file that's not actually in SQL, but a link is to SQL and how you work with a web server with that and so on. But we're not quite done yet. You see, when you're going through all these things, there are an awful lot of pitfalls. There's awful lot of security concerns. There's an awful lot of danger with files. For instance, what happens if you allow a person to upload a virus? What happens if you allow them to have a file name that ends up corrupting your server? There's so many things to think through. And so we're going to focus in on best practices for file uploading. Now, each of these is an entire video, just so we're clear. So there's six videos in a series. This last one will kind of be a wrap up of a series talking through what are the things that are important to think through when you're dealing with file uploads? Because I can tell you, it's not just a matter of putting an upload button on your page and saying we're good. It's definitely not the case unsecured. But even if you have it secured where the user has to log in before you can upload something, you should not, cannot, please don't just trust that file and allow anything to be uploaded and so on. So we'll talk through what are the best practices for making sure we make wise decisions that protect our server, that protect our systems, that protect us from the backlash or problems that are caused by malicious or unintentionally bad files. Okay, so we're gonna cover all those things in this series. Now, this is just the intro video and we're pretty much done now, but we're gonna come back in the next video with a simple file uploading. I hope that you will enjoy this series. Thank you, happy holidays. Enjoy your time off if you get some, and I hope you enjoy this series. And as always, I am Tim Corey.